this next guest uh, I met when I was in London. And uh, I part of the reason why I went to London is because uh, I have dreams of being able to work abroad in uh, the film industry in London. And London is really, I picked London because London is, in Europe is one of the bigger um, film hubs, I believe, in abroad. So I wanted one of the to see biggest whether, in Europe, I think, yeah, I was, I wanted UK, to see if it was a place that I could see myself living. And I pretty much fell in love with it, like within a few days. And then uh, I went on to a Facebook group called, I think, was it UK Filmmakers, Andre? Yes. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. 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 UK, so filmmakers. U- yeah, UK filmmakers. And to see if anybody would like hang out with me. And uh, yeah, Andre responded and was like, hey, yeah. what's up? <laughs> so Andre, I guess, t- tell us a bit about yourself. Um, yeah, sure. And uh, introduce yourself, who you are, and everything, and we'll we'll start asking you some questions. And welcome sure. to the podcast, Andre. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank you very Rosen's much. Thank po- you. This is the Get Rosen's podcast. So this is a podcast that uh, Adam and I started because we realized that through my first feature, which was completely self-funded, crowdfunded, and everything, um, yeah. made with thirty thousand U.S. dollars um, through crowdfunding that the trials and tribulations from that set was more probably more beneficial and interesting to talk about than the actual final product itself like i i love the final product but all the shit we went through learning we thought that that was actually might be quite beneficial to anybody who's trying to make their own film and everything so and you kind of have gone are going or have gone through that so um so yeah, tell us a little bit about yourself. And you have the volume all the way down on Instagram, right? Uh, let me check. Sorry, yeah, as, as much as much as yeah. I am pretty good at hear an echo, so I think I, you're I good, hear, Andre. I hear it. A little. May, may, oh, you do? M- might be mine. Uh, let me see. You can I, hear it now, it still. Yeah, no, it's I it's not really bad. Hear it. So cool. Oh, all righty. All right, cool. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, yeah, I'm based in London. You can tell by my 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 uh, body awesome accent. accent. <laughs> <laughs> my um, favorite accent in the world. <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah. So I, I did. I started filmmaking maybe five, six, no, six years ago, 2023. Um, originally, I was a musician, so I was touring and stuff like this, and doing stuff with music. And then that kind of started to get very quiet. So I was like, okay, I have another passion, which was film. Um, and then. Uh, yeah, and then I started to, I bought like a Canon 6D, I think it was, and then I'd done a short Ooh. film, and then we'd done like a, a couple of other short films, and then I was lucky enough to work with a production company, even though they screwed me over on a few things, it, I got to use proper, you know, better cameras, um, and yeah, kind of just progressed from there, done a few more short films, and then last, in 2021, then my first feature film during the pandemic, um, which was it kind of came about by a losing funding to a film that's having the determination. Um, I heard you swear before Christine's song as well. Um, oh, yeah, you can, oh, yeah, you can, you can absolutely, cool. yeah, okay, for cool. fuck's sakes, yeah, yeah. But, just yeah. watch your fucking mouth. That's all. <laughs> <Is that? laughs> um, yeah, so it's like I, I we lost the funding for that, and then I was like, okay, cool, well, you know, go fuck yourself. I'm gonna do my own film anyway, and then that's how Project yes. Summer came about, and that went very well. We got into a few festivals with it, um, and we're kind of prepping another two feature films now, so that's my, my two journey feature in a films. Nutshell. Wow. Yeah, no, I don't sleep very much. <laughs> yeah, I was about um, to say you're not <laughs> stopping. I love it. Yeah. Um, yeah. How, how do you? How did you self fund this? The one that you said to go fuck yourself film, and then how are you funding the other two that are coming? Um, well, I was quite lucky. Well, I, it, I kind of got bad luck, good luck from bad luck. So yes. um, mm. during the pandemic, I got my redundant from my job, so I got like a nice redundancy package, mm. and I was like, okay, cool. I can even just like wait and see what happens with my life or I can just take a risk and put everything into into film and a bio camera and all this stuff that you, you know, need to make a feature film and see what happens and that's kind of what I did and then um yeah and then uh and then yeah once I did that um I got another job so I was like okay cool that that kind of worked um and then um yeah I was like okay, how much money do I have to play with and then 
kind of just took it from there really and then came up with the concept and I knew a lot of the actors uh from doing short films with them a lot of them you know during that time everyone was really quiet for work so they was all, all super excited and, and happy to like jump on board and, and do something yeah and yeah exactly exactly um yeah, yeah and that's how it kind of all got on. yeah what was the uh name of this particular film uh that film was called project summer project summer great and yeah. then if you could give us a log line so that people out there will know what it's about, what is Project Summer about? Oh, okay. You know, I'm so used to reading, to saying this. That I've it's forgotten. okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, so it's basically Project Summer um, tells a story of a mercenary called, Mar called Miles Otembe. Um, he returns, I'm actually going to read it off the screen because it's here. Okay. Um, it's, it's almost nine o'clock here. So yeah. Um, yeah, the project the project summer tells a story of Mazda Tenby, a young mercenary who returns home from warfare where he lost the woman that he loves, Tammy, um, who's also a mercenary. Um, and he finds his country is is at war with a new kind of enemy, uh, which is the pandemic, which is you know what we all kind of experience. And we kind of follow his downward spiral. Um Maybe it's an upper spiral, but against <laughs> everything that is kind of thrown at, you know, what, what, what people are telling us on the TV and yeah. what we should, we shouldn't be doing, um, how we should be living our lives and not being able to go out. And these little things, like I took a lot of what I was feeling at that time into Miles's character. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, that's, that's pretty much in a nutshell what the film's about. But obviously it's, it's got sci-fi and horror elements. So it's not it's not like uh you know what we was all doing was watching Netflix Miles is is doing some other stuff <laughs> but it's, yeah. it's the same kind of uh you know vibe so how long did it take for you to from writing it to getting going to prep to starting day one of production uh it was super quick we um so we lost the film Madison in February yep then which was a I, different film though right or no yes it was, yeah which okay. was the one we had when we had funding for uh, yes. well, some most of the funding for and what and was they, that called Madison. Madison, got it. Okay. Yeah. Um, and that was in February. And then, literally, as soon as I got that call, I was like, "Okay, well, I'm going to do something anyway." Um, and then I sent it to Abiyomi, who's a, the who's this is the main uh, actor. Uh, yep. I think I said, I read the script in yeah March, and I sent it. No, sorry, sorry I read the script in the beginning of March. Started okay. production beginning of March. Casting this is twenty 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 one. 2021 okay yeah 2021 wow. um and then yeah we started filming I think we did it started the first day was the 29th of April 2021 so it was okay. super fast super shotgun super like this, this yeah. is really That's similar crazy. to Ursula yeah. because we yeah. started filming in April of 2021 as well yeah oh, wow. okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. or yeah. was it 2020 I watched um, as a very good film I really like yeah. it really cool <laughs> yeah yeah so it's very similar it was also uh i had a different film as well um i wanted to make prior to the pandemic called in yeah. um but that one was less about the funding and more about the subject matter not being conducive of the pandemic and it being easy to make so that one had the medical aspects to it and i okay. knew that with the pandemic there was no way i was going to be able to get into hospitals or yeah. you know emt stations easily so then I switched gears and it was also fast. I wrote it uh, with my writer, Camille, um, December of 2020, I think. And then we pitched it in January. It was greenlit uh, 2021. And then we went into prep, but we had a longer prep though. So, okay. so then that's when I actually raised money. So um, February we were greenlit, but then it got pulled the money got pulled up because like it always does it always does yeah. yeah and then i pitched my little butt off and then ma april 1st we raised the money to green light green light it and then april 20 not 8th my birthday was was that was on-site prep so we shot it around the same time oh, april wow, cool. 2021 yeah yeah so, yeah yeah, that's how. So that's funny. It's it's very. So yeah, it's, it's, it's really cool. It's really yeah. cool. Like, yeah, it's, it's it's nice to know as well. Like everyone's, you know, around the world, people are going through different stories so we're just about how they made their going it. Yeah, yeah, trying yeah. to just make it happen. Yeah, and it's fun because like now you're 
so we're starting to see some of that stuff that's coming out that that is coming out that happened during the pandemic and stuff so it's um, yeah. it's kind of this fun to see like what kinds of films people made when they didn't when they had limited um time and just well they had time they just had limited resources and accessibility to, to stuff so exactly. all in all yeah. how much if you're allowed to say did it cost you to finish project summer um i don't know uh, all in all, i think because i bought everything with redundancy money um yeah i if for example if 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 I had to, if I didn't have the cameras and the lighting stuff that I had bought and I hired someone to do it, it would have been a yeah. lot more. Of course. Um, but because yeah, I, sure. I had the experience in cinematography and the experience in lighting um, mm -hmm. and then editing as well, um, I think we, I think in total it was about three grand, three, well, a three thousand um, pound. Yeah. So that's about five to, grand. To, to film. Four, four yeah. Grand. Yeah, yeah to, to, to film everything um but then not for that's not including what we're doing now with marketing and screenings and stuff like this yeah. um this is stuff again right. this is that like, you don't really think about at that time like it was in the back of my head but i was sure. like look andre just 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 film you know and then see just what go. happens at yeah you know and then yeah. just see what happens at the end of it and obviously when you hire a cinema or something you you need to pay for that so it's not yeah. free unless you connected which i'm not at the moment um yeah so it was uh so the stuff that we're doing now kind of um, is adding to that to that bill, but yeah. it's it's an experience, you know, and that's what I think people need to do more of is just just to do it and see what happens. Just do right? it, because yeah. You, you're happens. not going to know these pitfalls unless you experience them, and then yeah, if you're if you're like a one trick pony, you can then you kind of write and create one thing, then you shouldn't really do this. Exactly, I I agree. Uh, I'm I have one thing I wanted to mention, but what well, before I do that, uh, move your iPhone or your phone real quick so that you're in the frame on the i on IG. Oh, okay. You're like oh, half Instagram, yeah. yeah, you're like sorry. Okay. Let me just there you go. Better. Perfect. Cool. It's all much good. better. Perfect. And I'm, yeah. I'm yes. representing Zed and Otto with my t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> good. It's a dope uh, shirt. Uh, your, thank you, <laughs> this film, Project Summer, is closer to my first feature fun employment because it was okay. shot with five thousand dollars as well. Oh wow. um, yeah. So, um, so which is very which is you said yours is three thousand pounds and it was also because I didn't have the equipment um yeah. and so it was so sorry somebody donated their equipment um so I didn't have to do and I bought the lights that we used which were like just one case of lights but well, you <laughs> shot it yourself yes and then yeah. um yeah. uh it was it ended up being four dps basically because not because of uh it was just because it was whenever we had time. So I don't know, yeah. did you actually have a schedule or was it also like, hey, are you guys free this weekend? Let's go and do this like this weekend. Um, yeah, no, we had, no, we had a schedule. So, so we had like call sheets. Uh, okay. We filmed yeah. over 20, oh God, was it 28 days, I think, filming, but it was from April to July. So okay. it, was very, it was very much like we had right. a lot of it gotcha. planned before um, the UK came out of lockdown. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then obviously everyone got busy, so yep. I was very cautious. Flexible. To, oh, yes, yeah, exactly. You were flexible. Yes. Okay, this is yeah. very similar. Um, and then things like naturally worked better because obviously, yeah, July time, uh, were June you time got super sunny. So editing while you were filming, like, like no, no, I was I, I wasn't editing. Um, I was watching it. I was watching the footage and I was okay. seeing how it was looking and if there was yeah. something. But luckily, there was nothing that we needed to to to, to reshoot. Everything was was on point. Yeah. Um, and I must stress as well, I did have one of the best actors to work with in Abiyomi because he, for one, he's in pretty much every scene. Um, yeah. And he was super just like, I would call him at two o'clock in the morning and be like, oh, can you film uh, tomorrow morning? That's, and he, yeah, and he, was, how, he was just yeah. there. <laughs> it's so funny. That's, that's the best people you want to work with. Exactly. Adam knows, like talking I about do. with unemployment with my, my lead, Adam, <laughs> another, not this Adam, a different Adam. It was oh, like okay. that too. Um, I fixed a lot of my film by being able to call up Adam and be like, yeah. hey, what are you doing tomorrow? Can we shoot this one shot of you walking across, you know, like just little things of like, mm -hmm. like that. Or like, yeah. uh, especially when I was in post, a lot of like fillers. Because for me, and I, I'm interested in what you thought, um, I, I am not a trained writer at all. Yeah. Uh, I learned writing through making things. 
And what I was realizing when I was um, in post was that, oh shit, like I am really bad at writing transitions. So I wrote chunks of scenes with dialogue, but nothing that really connected these chunks of scenes. Because my my background, when I started to do narrative was YouTube. So I was really big on like little comedic series type things like sketch comedy sketch mm-hmm. comedy type stuff so i never really written uh a feature and stuff and and so in post i learned how to be a right better writer yeah because i go and like we string it together and it would like be clunky as fuck because i didn't write any of the transitions and anything in between and everything so uh what did you learn i mean through the process of stringing it together about how you should improve either as a director or as a cinematographer or writer, you know? Yeah. Um, That is a a really good question. I, I, I think every, every aspect I kind of learned something, you know, Um, uh, yeah, with cinematography every day when we was filming, like I haven't, I had an idea and then we was filming, um, just watching the film kind of come to life, you think of certain yes. frames you want to use or shots. Um, and then when you kind of watch the actors and you watch everyone, everyone does their stuff, you know, it's like, okay, well, my idea is not going to work. It's, it's not going to be, there's no point filming what I plan to do because right. the energy that these guys have, I can capture everything in Feeling, yeah. this moment, in this frame, and not and abandon the frames I had before. Um, so that's something that I learned, you know, I mean, you can, it's always good to plan. It's always good to storyboard. Um, yes. Story- storyboarding is super important even if you don't stick to it just so that you can what i used to do is like sit back like before i went to bed and just read go through my storyboards just so i can see the film in my head you know yeah, regardless yeah, if, if i use that when i'm shooting as long as i can see it and read it like a comic book kind of thing yeah um, totally. that is super important um because yeah. then you, you see the story you yeah. know and then if the actors ask to look at it um they see the story as well they kind of get more what you're trying to do Sure. Um, so How much did you that... allow them to improv? Because you mentioned that in the moment mm. you would feel how your actors were, which was very much like my experience too. Fun and Plan was a shit ton of improv. So that's why I'm curious um, yeah. how much of it went with your script. Are you much, are you very much a, what I write, like, you know, Tarantino, this is God, this is by the Bible. This is what, yeah, or, stick yeah, to this or Yeah, stick to this. Or are you like a, you know what? Like, if you don't feel like saying that, let's do, let's try something else. How much of it? Yeah, no, that? I'm not. Uh, I wasn't so much like that because um, I I think the script is there for a reason. So, so you should follow it. Especially when it comes to like, 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 like the, what, what you're saying, because it it's about the character. But if yeah. someone wants to add to it, that's great. You know, or someone wants to change a few words, so by, as long as you're still saying the same thing. Um, right, 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 right. Rough, yeah. you know the point I mean? is um, made, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, uh, so I was quite flexible, but then because I had worked with everyone before and I knew how they, they worked, okay. um, yeah, I, I was kind of ready for what they was going to bring and how they were going to improv. And we spoke about improv a little bit as well, and I was open to a little bit of improv, but ultimately, like, I wouldn't say as heavy as Tarantino was script in the Bible, but um, obviously the script is 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 what is what the story is about. And as much as the character, obviously the actors can take on the character and feel they um, identify with it in a certain way. Um, mm-hmm. Film for me is super subjective, and yes, it's, that's yeah. just their opinion. You yeah. know, as much as I don't want to hurt actors' ego, it's just their opinion. This is a lot, like I have my opinion, so yeah. we should still kind of stick to some kind of rule you know what i mean okay right yeah you know i actually have a question for you andre uh about the writing process um the turnaround for the writing process was like a month you said right in the beginning yeah yeah it was super super quick man yeah yeah it was um, crazy so did you feel like you could have like captured all of the energy in that time span like of of everything that like you just wanted to vomit out like creatively, you know what I mean? Or did it feel like, well, we just got to run and gun it. I have frames in my mind. I already have Mm. some of the story points in my brain. I just got to execute it and I just got to run, you know, or did you like, was it like, like a bit of both probably? (laughs) Yeah. I don't know. It 
to be fair like I I am um, no because I, I I remember I, I wrote it like we had a script down and we had the storyboard like I spent a whole month on literally writing the script and writing the storyboard and making sure gotcha. I was happy with it before I sent to Abiyomi first the, the main guy right and as soon as he was on board and as soon as he was like yeah bro I like it let's do it um then I was like okay cool it, let's just go let's just go and let's just do it um so I knew the script was good because he liked it and he was on board um and the writing yeah it, I kind of when I write I always kind of um I don't go too much into my process but I do like uh, I write every scene like like the little bullet points of mm. what happens in every scene and I, I do that very super quickly like I I have my idea as to what I want to happen at the end I have my ideas for the scenes and then I just kind of go bang 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 how do I connect all this stuff together and how do I right. how do I still kind of uh, um make the characters yeah flow between these scenes I have in my head and yeah then when I start actually writing then I start to rethink really about uh Miles and Tammy and uh Claire and stuff like this and then when I get the final script I was like okay cool does it make sense yes right. then, then we go to the next process which is obviously doing a second draft if it doesn't make sense then I'm like okay cool let me throw that away and I'll start again but lucky with Project Summer it, it all kind of made sense so. Right. Because it just all sort of plays in that moment. And then it's like, well, how does the character feel in this particular moment? You know, and then you move on to the next scene and the next scene and the exactly. next scene. Yeah. And I, and I think that's like a, that's a, it's a, like, I love that creativity, but like it can go awry super quickly. You know what I mean? Right, Especially can, if yeah, you don't can, yeah. have like a concrete way of like, all right, well, these are the characters you establish the characters what their wants and needs are, what, what they, how they plan to do it, how they plan to get it. That's mm. really hard. That's a the very rules. hard process yeah. the, because the it's almost like you have to, every single character is an onion and you have to peel every single layer of it. And then once you get to the core, you may or may not really, you know, feel like you yeah. got what you wanted out of the character. You know what I mean? It, it's just like, yeah. it could be a scary, scary thing, it, but it's, super yeah. super is man like, like for example with the film that we're doing now um or in a few which is, weeks which is. um a film called when the time comes um when the time okay. Comes. okay is it a, a short film or the feature no a feature film yeah okay, yeah great. um we start how many cool, we start how many passing, shoot man. days <laughs> um i want to try and keep it as short but, but the whole film is well 80 percent of the film is is in a car um so I want to try when we're trying to have like a one take approach in regards to the car scene. Oh, um, it's cool. not gonna be one take, but just we're trying to film wow. everything as much as we can. Um, not have so many days. Uh, yeah, because you're following a journey basically. I don't know if you, but, but in, a, in a nutshell, the stuff the film is is about um, uh, someone who goes through a lot of issues. Um, they having the cost of living paying for his mom in a home paying for his child to try child support stuff like this paying for rent um and then he loses his job and he kind of exacts revenge on his on his boss after kind of um stepping away from certain things he used to do as a kid you know he kind of goes on a straight and narrow but he loses everything he's like fuck it and you know what have i got to lose and he yeah he, he's, he goes back to that bad way of living um and he takes his his boss's door and hold it to ransom in a car and the, you follow the, like the journey of them as he's about to do something which he says to, obviously to his boss like look pay me a certain amount of money or you know i'm gonna kill your daughter um but there's a weird bit of stockholm syndrome going on i don't know if you guys know what that is but we, you know, we yes. kind of feel yeah um and the story is about that it's about the relationship these two people in the car build um so to film it over so many days, I think would break the connection for the actors. So I'll be trying to keep it like the castings anyway, very mm -hmm. short. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, sorry. I, the, I always the, have I technical the, questions. So I'm going to ask technical okay. questions. Um, camera inside the car or are you mounting it outside? Inside the car. We haven't actually, I haven't actually thought, to, I literally just wrote the script to be completely honest with you. Um, yeah. And I was looking at casting. Uh, yeah. Everything's going to be inside the car. Um, okay. I want to keep people as close to the. Into, there's a few scenes where they had come out of the car, and obviously we're walking out of the car with them. But yeah, I, I don't want to film. I mean, I think um, some scenes it could be an idea, actually, but we have the camera out because it looks nice as well, yeah, like yeah, cinematography yeah. wise. 
when you see yeah. like, the, like if you go for a tunnel when you see the mm-hmm. reflection of the oh, lights oh absolutely you know, yeah stuff like yeah. this i think is beautiful in movies i can yeah. drive for example yes um, but uh yeah, but the, the dialogue majority, bits you're going to keep it inside everything's yeah. going to be inside because i want people yeah. to feel like they're also you know in, in the car with with them when they go through this weird yeah, yeah i ask this issue. because as an ad driving scenes are a nightmare and so question would be because mm. i've been in london like where are you doing the car scenes because it's a shit show driving wise too in london most people take the tube and it's public transportation transportation it's like new york yeah. for, for those who never been to london so are you doing this like outside of the city or yeah yeah so- it's going to start off in London. Um, okay. That's where he kind of takes her from. But it's not going to be like central London. We're going to okay. do it in East London. Um, okay. Yeah, there's no police there. It's fine. <laughs> uh, and then and then we, we're we going to go from East London and then we go out of London to the motorway and then to probably like the country area. Okay. Um, because the film ends in a forest so uh, where so something happens, but we still won't ruin, yeah. ruin it. So then my other question, yes, from a production producer standpoint, uh, do you need to shut down roads? Is there a permit thing that you have to do? How does that work in? Yeah, there there isn't. We we do have a permit. Um, We haven't got to shut down roads. Um, The time of day we're filming is all at night, so there's less cars on the roads anyway. Yes. Uh, The only thing that we're still kind of investigating now is health and safety. Um, yes. mm-hmm. for the actors for example obviously with the main guy driving mm-hmm. a lot of driving um, yes. we have to be conscious of obviously when he gets tired we have to stop um, yes. because obviously we have because because obviously it is in a car there's minimal people so it's me doing cinematography and directing mm-hmm. um, a sound guy and then the actress and that's pretty much it the car's going to be lit um, we're going to light it up pre-production um, yeah with like the are you guys doing like the battery power things and just to come like yeah we're going to kind of see something. what kind of kind of works so we have a meeting yeah. on Wednesday um, where we're going to yeah just kind of go through a few things like this but uh, yeah we still kind of working those angles out yeah um, yeah but yeah the, the definitely obviously the, in a perfect world it'd be great to say cool we're going to shut down these roads and we're right. going to have like three cars behind us to kind of be like actors yeah, driving. Yeah, the follow so looks, vehicle. Yeah, all and they can stuff. beat their horn on certain part, but yeah, we yeah. have to to kind of adopt a slight guerrilla style. But um, yeah. yeah, I always like good. asking because like where I am, where we are, Adam and I, I think in our careers, we've as crew members, we're now at that, we're now disconnected from doing a guerrilla style basically yeah so it's now on the sets that we're at where it's so by rules and stuff like that that it's harder now to conceive like okay let's just shoot it you know no permits but safely whatever and like i don't know like when i say car anything with driving for me as an ad is Mm -hmm follow vehicle we have two follow vehicles one in the front and the back and we sandwich yeah. them in the middle and then i've got walkies for the four uh security officers two at the top two at the bottom type thing and then i've got pas that are t- it's nuts you know so yeah. it's fun to go back and be like yes you can not ideal but you can safely shoot a film yeah. from a gorilla standpoint because that that is how a lot of my earlier films had it were and and uh it's interesting because there's this fine line i think and trust that you have mm. to have with your crew and your cast yeah. to be able to do that you know mm-hmm. because for it's sure, like sure, yeah. yeah because if i were working with somebody who's never worked with me telling them that we're not going to shut down any roads we're not doing it but it, they will be safe is like it's harder to convince somebody like that, you know? So yeah. I don't know. It's, it's interesting because coming from Ur- I always go back to Ursley cause that was my last thing. Uh, Ursley after doing that, that was like a 35 person, 40 person crew. I very much was like, you know what? The next feature that I'm writing is literally in a house. I'm going to DP it and shoot it. There will be five people. Like, I don't want to deal with any of that anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because there is a beauty, the simplicity of what I see is, and 
is going to be exactly what I get because I'm the one in control of the camera type thing. And I don't have to deal with so so and so is tired or they don't like the food or well, all this like bullshit exactly. basically yeah, that yeah. that I understand why because we are all different and all humans need different things um and this crew is this is a job to yeah. lots of people right so to most people it, it becomes it is a job so you have to treat people in a way that you know that it is conducive to the job conditions that they want so it's just easier to control all those aspects so it's it's fun for me to hear that because i feel like the next film that i want to do is very much in the style that you are which is five people sound you know and just simple and just get it done basically so exactly yeah exactly yeah. I mean like just just to reiterate what you said like I, I I've worked on a couple of films where you have a lot of people and it, it, there's so many egos and um oh yeah people who have demands and like, like too many chefs in the kitchen um yeah. and I'm quite an introverted person so if I can avoid being around people <laughs> um I'll, I'll try and make it less as, humans the better <laughs> exactly yeah. exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly because we're all a bit fucked up um yeah we are yeah, no, yeah. we are yeah 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 <laughs> it's like so I, interesting I, yeah. because i i get really mixed in because my part of my job as an ad is to make sure everybody's comfortable right yeah. so i i get the demands and stuff i really do from a emotional or whatever logical standpoint but i'm so mixed because I direct and produce as well and there is like a stigma that if you don't do it by the mm. book and do it right you know people get really offended or really mad at you because yeah. they feel like by cutting those corners or something you are jeopardizing either the quality or safety or something like that but I also get those are the people who have never had to raise money and yeah. had to, you know, make all that of, shit happen. Yeah. 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 Exactly. So it's yeah. this constant pull because I have so many friends that are in the industry that work as crew. I work as crew. And, yeah. you know, they're they're always complaining about like, oh, well, today, like they served us pizza or like today, yeah. blah, blah, blah. But I get it. It's It's like this. If you're at a, if you're on a set that set the expectations that it's going to be of this caliber and you don't get that, that's valid type thing. Yeah. But I really, coming from a director producer standpoint, I really believe you can very much make films without that fat attached yes. to it. And yeah. I think that is the constant battle between creators and pure crew is that sure, like, yeah. you know so it's i don't know I, I i get really mixed about it because i i'm i'm also one of those in yeah. the crew that's complaining sometimes being like well mm-hmm. like we went over five hours or we went over an hour or whatever and yeah. i have to keep remembering like dude my first film had nobody and we were shooting 15 hour days and it was fine everybody's happy no, yeah, 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 yeah. So, I mean, a, a, a question for you: um, when when you have that that feeling, do, is it is it usually on a on a project where you've just been hired to do? So you don't have like a yes, emotional you don't connection. have skin yeah. in the game. Yeah, correct. Exactly, and I think that's fair. Like it's it's your job. Yeah. Like if I go to my office for my, my day job, you know, and yep. my chair's not there, I'm like, how do, I'm like meant to fucking work. Like yeah, like, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, no, it's it a is job, that. You know? You're you're um, absolutely right. It's, yeah. it's one of those things. Like, and I think when you do have a smaller crew, everybody feels like they have more of, the of a stake. Yeah, it's yes. like, okay, cool. Well, I don't have so many people around me. So obviously I need to take responsibility and learn and grow in my role. Um, and then at the end of the day, like I've always said this, but like the people, the audience is the most important thing and the audience don't give a shit about who's, how many people behind the camera. They just care yeah. about what you see on the screen. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. The story, the actors, you know, um, subconsciously, maybe they think about who's directing and mm. oh, this, this lighting looks nice. 
um yeah. but ultimately you know they're just they're just watching the movie you know that's that's yeah. why we ultimately, do it ultimately that's all they care about yeah when yeah, I, exactly. um when I, I mentor uh, students and filmmakers and stuff, and that's my biggest thing is telling them, like, ultimately, all they give a shit about is literally what's in the frame. They don't care yeah. if things went wrong or, like, you used a specific light or a camera. Like, that's all us that yeah. feeds our ego or whatever. But, like, in the end, it's what's on screen. And it's and I think you really realize that as a filmmaker, when you go and rewatch all the stuff that you've created and be okay. like, be like, yeah, this looks just as good as what I'm yeah. using right now. You know, yeah. I remember when my first short films were a one car of equipment that was my car, you know, and yeah. now I'm like, oh, I have to have a grip truck and like these lights and whatever and stuff like that. And it's, no you really don't to an extent yeah. i don't know it's just yeah, it's, it's interesting yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's a struggle but i think i think um every time you go through the experiences you learn how to make it not so heavy for the next one that you do yeah you know um yeah it's all about growing and obviously the, the time when i don't know warner brothers or, or or sony send you an email you know and say oh christine you know we want you to direct whatever in the next spider yeah. 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 yeah yeah you're, you're gonna be like I, I really I'm don't there. Care yeah exactly you know you'll be like i don't care if there's like 50 or 100 people behind me yeah. like, i'm 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 sorry i'm all so for it yeah exactly, exactly you know but yeah, at the so moment at that le this yeah. level is like okay, well, yeah, yeah exactly you know? context and environment and everything and um our friend of the podcast slash co-creator of get reals and just common and she said to be fair we were also in our 20s when we shot fun employment so that's true ah, it's, okay <laughs> but it, it's i think it's it's all about it always just comes down to expectation and yes. how we build those expectations for the people and the team that we bring on so yeah as long as your team or whoever are in it like you said they have skin in the yeah. game they know what to expect you know yeah so it, it's it, people get angry when they've been fed different expectations that's yeah. when things are get tricky so i don't know it's, it's just interesting because like after like after ursley i'm like i literally want to go back to me and the camera the actors and that's yeah. it <laughs> yeah no, I can't feel, yeah i understand yeah. i understand it's, it's yeah i mean i understand what you, about the ego but i also think maybe there are things you know you saw that you would like you know i, I could have done this different or, or those are not totally. shit on your shit on your dop but i could have done better um uh but like, and again i, I watched those before it was really cool i really enjoyed it it was a really cool movie um but you also, if it's something that you've written and you've directed, you're always going to have that kind of like totally control kind of thing over it. You know, like with me in Project Summer, like when I watch that now, is like there's no way I could have got anyone to film that but myself because they would have no idea what. Yes. I, what that's how I, I feel about I've fun written. employment. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I watched um, fun yeah. employment and like from an AD standpoint, I was like, I would never have made this film. Like yeah. from from what I know now, this film would not exist because yeah. like my it was all uh, fun employment was like fifty different locations, like fifty different characters. Like I said, I wrote characters huh. because through the casting, I was like, "You're a great actor. We don't have a role for you. However, I'm going to write a role for you because you're a great actor." So that's how yeah. we ended up with like fifty different actors, basically with like cameo roles. Um, yeah, but like from what I know now and like what I made the crew do at that point, I'm like, this would not fly now. You know, yeah. I remember, yeah. so my roommate is, uh, was the makeup artist on it, Roxy. Um, oh, cool. she had to pull her makeup case up this like, um, big ass mountain, like hill thing in Austin, uh, uh, uh Jacob's well, Adam, mm -hmm. uh, that versus now she's working on big ass like tv shows and stuff and like movies and stuff pilots and like, yeah I, and she's like oh i don't have five print days you know it's just it, the world is it, it, i can't do that anymore which so the thought of like can i do that again is is is, is also 
Um, I'm going off a tangent, but it's just it's yeah. just fun to hear people in that process of shooting and creating at the bare minimum. Yeah, um, it's, a, yeah. it's a different way of filmmaking for sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think I, I think even the big filmmakers sometimes like to go back to because I watched a film yes uh, called Unsane by Steven, uh, Steven Soderbergh, I think his name okay. is. Okay, um, unseen, oh, yeah. that, I've heard yeah, about Yeah, yeah, and that, that, that was filmed on an iPhone. And I was like, yeah. and, you know, I was watching some of the behind the scenes and I was like, wow, they really went to the basics to, <laughs> to make this movie. But you would, you would never tell. And I imagine yeah. for, a, for, for a filmmaker like him, it yeah. was like, well, wow, cool, man. And so go to film school. He does. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, which I was a, I'm a big, re- I, I re- really respect directors that, you know, either edit their own stuff or shoot their own stuff. stuff. Because I just think that there's a pers- appreciation when they don't, when they have somebody in that role, yeah. you know, because they they know what it takes. And so, so um, I don't know, is I just, as an AD, I've just worked with so many directors that have zero experience on set and are just like, I'm the director. And I'm like, but you don't know anything. But yeah, some so. directors who have no experience on a film set ever, period. Like yeah. they just they they just somehow had a I guess a good story a and friend. a lucky break, yeah. and yeah. they got a budget and they're like, "What's a film? How do I shoot a thing? What do what do you know? It's like what's a what's a call sheet? You know? It's like I boy vey, you know yeah. we're we're you're you're stuck to ground zero, and then now you're at the behest of this like director who, I mean you know for no disrespect, it doesn't know their ass from the ground. <laughs> Yeah, you yeah. know, <laughs> so you're just running circles around them, you know, or her, you know. Yeah, it, it, just, yeah, yeah. I've been, I've been, I've worked with a lot of directors like that, so it's it's cool when you have the Soderberghs and the Rodriguez yeah. and stuff like that that started off like shooting their own stuff or editing their own stuff or whatever. And it, and I do think there is a beauty to going to the the absolute minimum um of something i i think you are right there are plenty of directors that want to go back to that because yeah there is something creative about solving problems without throwing money at them yes exactly. and i think some of the best that's why some of the best films for a lot of filmmakers are their earliest films yeah. um because they had to think creatively to be able to finish their film or whatever and there's a heart to that um and a rawness to it that you just don't get when you are on a hundred person crew following a shit ton of rules with union and a lot of stuff that we understand is for because it's your job you, you want the whatever um but you just don't get the same effect sometimes yeah so yeah. It, it's interesting I, I i i get pushed and pulled about this all the time because I understand, because I'm one of those who now, like, if somebody brings me a script and it's not, I don't know, 400 a day or whatever, I'm like, I don't yeah. really, I'm not going to work on that, you know, type thing. But like, but then I'm put on my director's hat and I'm like, or director slash producer hat. And I'm just like, yeah, let's do all the roles because <laughs> I have no money. Yeah. And make it work. So it's, it's a, it's a weird place to interesting place to be how you, all your you said you have two features that you're working on so yeah. will all of will both of them be the same where it's like five five people five to ten people max um, type thing? It, it, in my head yeah i think the first one that we, we start in a few months is definitely going to be small especially the, the car scenes yeah um because yeah we're going to have like a normal a normal car we can have like a yeah a car right. so, yeah. so uh yeah we can't have so many people on board um the one afterwards is kind of like a one take movie um and that for that purpose we're gonna have to keep things very small as well um yeah. because i don't want to catch so many people in my, the environment we're filming in are you gonna um, you're obviously gonna rehearse like crazy yeah the, 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 yeah. the one take film we, we will this this the idea of it was just amazing um and the script it's kind of half written but the idea yeah the, the actress who's playing the other character is i told her you know sold it to her and she was on board the moment i said it and um it's it's a really cool concept and i it when you it, so basically it's about these two characters who are polar opposites um 
and they get locked in the bathroom and you have to just and you kind of watch how they go through their dealing with one's got anxiety and is uh, claustrophobic and stuff and the other one's super confident and super chauvinistic kind of thing um and how they deal with being locked in a small space um for about an hour but mm. one of the, the the female character um I can see, yeah, the female character had lost a child, um, mm-hmm. which led to her being ang- ang- anxious, and, anxious, yeah. yeah um, and you find out over the hour and thirty minutes that this guy has some involvement as to how she lost her child as well. So it's kind of Fun. It's, it's that kind of story, yeah, um, yeah. So the wow. concept is really cool, and it's yeah, that's being a, in cool a bathroom, concept. Thank you, yeah, and then and, and being in a bathroom, um, uh we yeah it's very easy to light the, the bathroom that we have is very easy to light yeah. um sorry no let me touch with not easy to light it's lightable it's lightable yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. uh so yeah that's that's that that that's yeah. but yeah in terms, in terms of people and bodies and shadows and stuff obviously we can't i know we can't have so many people so yeah right. that's super that's a small crew too then yeah yeah definitely, definitely. Gotcha. so in line with this is separate but it just reminds me context wise um you have you watched lock the oh, film? such it a great movie film. lock is um uh, it took place all in a car but the concept oh, okay. is very simple like your your yeah, um, yeah. bathroom one and yeah, you okay. find out also but um uh what's his face Adam? tom hardy he tom was hardy. uh he, uh, he plays the driver and basically like his life falls apart within an oh, hour no, yeah i've well, seen driving. this film but yeah, here it's, it's amazing not, yeah yeah like like here it's not called walk it's called um uh sorry i'm gonna check this now yeah um, yeah but, but i, I know i know i've seen it it's yeah great film great film. yeah of the of the simplicity of like this it's just literally a dude driving yeah, and it was just only like a few characters, and it's all taking place with phone calls, like yeah. through yeah. through the car. So it's just yeah. like you know, he lost his family, he lost his. It was just like one thing after another. There was an affair. Another. There's a yeah. There was an yes. affair. Yeah, that yeah. affair had a it's child, a and then, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, crazy. Uh, um, over here is called Lock. 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 Yeah. Yeah. It's Lock. the same. Yeah. It's the same yeah. title here. Yeah. It's yeah. um. Yeah. Okay. It's a it, like those are those are kind of one of those films because um another film like that that I just recently watched uh called Phone Booth with Colin Farrell. Ah uh, yes Phone yeah. Booth. Oh, that was ages ago. Jeez yeah. yeah. That was right back in two thousand two. I want to say yeah. two thousand three. Yeah. It's it's one that's of those kind of got famous yeah, that's for... exactly where he got famous and like yeah. all you hear is Kiefer sutherland's like because he plays the antagonist in the mm. in the film well sort of and mm. uh he basically like has a just a red dot sight like sniper rifle on this dude who's just making a phone call in the phone booth mm. he just yeah. walked into a phone booth his phone died you know a cellular nextel phone in 2003 that's a flip phone <laughs> And he had to go into the phone booth and make a phone call. And it's like his life, like Locke, just falls apart because this dude who just has his sights aimed on this dude who doesn't even know, just like you're going to go through one of the worst tragic events in your life. And he like like his kid got involved, uh, his ex-wife got involved and showed like all the affairs that he had and his run-ins with the police and stuff like that. It's amazing. So good. It's um, I, I recommend phone booth to anyone who hasn't seen it yet. Um, cool. I'm ready. Yeah, I it's, it's, uh, it's a, it's a, it's really it. cool. I like those. Uh, do you, so you like those isolation films where it's just like kind of just one spot beginning to end nowhere yeah. else, you know? Yeah, like it, it, it's really cool. It's like going to the theater a little bit. Yeah. Like oh, TV. totally. Yeah. <laughs> it is so like you just, theater. You just watch, yeah. You know, you just watch someone for an hour and a half, whatever, and yeah, they go through these range of emotions. You know. Um, yeah. yeah. I think I, people I, I really are like scared it. to do that because a lot of it is lies so heavily on obviously the writing, but also the mm. the ta- the acting. So yes. if one or the other falls, is not. At not on par, then the entire thing falls apart. But that's also yeah. the beauty of it too, is that like, is that simplicity of like, there's nothing to hide behind. There's no cuts to hide behind. There's no, 
it's literally how good is your story how good and how good is the acting which yeah yeah which ultimately is what's most important in in film it's a story story and acting yeah 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 And, and, and it's easy that we've lost sight of that um when you get wrapped into it because i filmmakers we're all gearheads and we all want to like do the next cool thing and we want to light something some way and we want to shoot it with a cool shot and all types of things but what i know it's still what it boils down to is is the story good and is the acting good you know exactly so, exactly but exactly. i understand you two's points about like having it like as tight and as small of a crew as possible even if that means you have to wear all of the hats yeah. you know and <laughs> yeah. but there's like a a sense of freedom right like there's there kind of like sense a of sense of this is exactly what it is it's whatever you want to do in that particular moment so like yeah. You know, if you're shooting in the car and just be like, okay, well, how about we just like reverse the lighting and you could just do that yourself. Yeah, you don't have to you ask somebody. Yeah. You just, yeah. you just yeah, there, get out. Go. Freedom is exactly what it is. It's like, you're not beholden to, to somebody like one of the things I can think of is like, uh, I was on a set and eight, it's always aiding, aiding. And, um, we were needed to move, shift the camera to the left. And then one of the art people were like, shouldn't we call the grips? I was like, they're literally (laughs) 10 minutes away. Yeah. Everybody is it cool? Are you happy if I touch this and move it by like literally two feet? Great. Cool. Let me do that. You know, but like when you're on a big bloated set, which I understand why you need those sometimes and the rules and safety and all that stuff. Like you want to make one decision and it's got to escalate through 10 different departments. You know, it's beautiful yeah. where you can just be like, oh, I want to shift the camera this way and I'm going to move this just real quick and then let's do, you know? So there is exactly. control, is a control and simplicity and just freedom because of that control. So you yeah. nailed, that's the, I miss that very much. Yeah. Yeah. And being able to use your own common sense as well is also. Yeah. A plus. Yeah. <laughs> right. And then um, trying to go through the process of explaining it. Like you said, you're, I mean, I am too, I'm introverted as well. Like it's, yeah. it's hard to just be like, I, I, I don't want to explain this for five minutes when Correct. I can just do I the just fucking do thing yeah. now. Yeah. yeah exactly. I get that. Exactly. Yeah. So it, it's interesting because um, there is a jump, I believe, because I have to AD. It's always coming down to that. I can see it where the director is really frustrated that they can't do something that they normally could have done when they had a five person crew, you know? So, so I, I often have to bridge that as the AD because they're like, well, like I can just pop over and shoot that really quick. What do you mean? We can't shoot on this giant Hill and stuff like that. I was like, if it's just you and you're the one holding the camera and the actor's really cool with it, I understand, but you're going to have anarchy because we have 10 people who don't believe that that's safe, you know? Yeah. So I have to bridge that gap and I see that frustration because, and I, it's annoying because I understand from both perspectives, right? Yeah. From a feeling of like, I get it. Like maybe when you shot your other film by yourself, you could do that, but we are now dealing with 30 people. Yeah. I have to be the represents representative for those 30 people who don't feel like that's the proper way to do it. So it's, it's like, this is constant, like it's a fight. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's, it's very interesting. Yeah. So I want to, for my next feature, do it just the way. Bring it simple. Yeah. Yeah. Simple, simple, simple. Yeah. Simple is best. And I think, yeah, yeah, I think now as well, like it, it, now I think for me anyway, we need more films where people are being more creative. Cause when I put on Netflix or something, I, I, my, most of the time I don't watch Netflix anymore. I just find a DVD and watch the DVD, oh, Blu-ray, sorry. Um, hmm. Like I, I, I like the idea of Netflix. I really do. I think yeah. playing with Spotify and being a musician as well, like I understand why it exists. Um, but I think it has been a super copy and paste way of creativity like people just okay this is what we need to do and then you just follow what everybody else does and it the creativity just kind of 
I can tell you why. <laughs> okay, go for it. Yeah, please. <laughs> because when you're at that level of a certain budget level, you yeah. are beholden to a bunch of other people whose money is involved. Yeah. Yeah. And the problem is business is all about being risk averse. Yes. And so they're going to um they want to protect their investment and to do that you do what's been proven has worked. Mm. Yeah. And so by only doing things that have worked, you are not stepping out and taking risks. So there's yeah. a fine line of being able to take risks and being able to do things that guarantee your investment back. And the problem yeah. is at that level, people just are like, we saw this happen and it worked and it, and it, 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 um, by by putting this particular actor in it, there is a guaranteed return on an investment of twenty percent. That is Nick. That's why Nicolas Cage is one of the most um, casted film uh, actors because yeah. apparently his ROI is huge. Because apparently he's so well received internationally yeah. that if you put him in, there is legitimate data that shows that Nicolas Cage equals this X ROI percentage. You know, yeah, and it, just kept, yeah exactly. it's so annoying because, because again, I understand I'm a business background. So, yeah. so it's, I struggle with this a lot mm. because I have to explain stuff like this to business investors who I have to get the money from. Right. Yeah. yeah. So all they care about is, will I make my money back and I have to get them to trust me that doing this risk will get them this money even though there's no proof of that and i think that's the hardest part is why why you have to work with name talent or not yes work with name talent right yeah i'm always about like if they're a great actor like it doesn't matter if they're they have been in netflix or whatever but mm -hmm. I get it. Like, yes, yes. No, I understand. Yeah, 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 yeah. Putting Name Tom sounds. Hardy in there mm -hmm. is yeah. guaranteeing that people will go watch it because it's just because it's Tom Hardy, right? Is it? Yeah. But is it really a hundred percent that Tom Hardy is the best person for the role? Maybe somebody who you don't know, who's an incredible actor, could pro maybe could. do a better job at this than putting that particular talented and this exactly. is where i've had to argue a million times at the level of getting investments um yeah i've had to part ways with potential funding because i couldn't get them to trust that this particular no-name actor could get their investment back versus somebody who's been on these shows or whatever you know, yeah, yeah. so that's why you end up with this diluted cookie cutter film and people complain about it all the time. Like, oh, it's all the same stuff. And like, yes, because films take a certain amount of money to make and people want to make that money back. And it's easy yeah. to think from just right. a cost benefit ROI standpoint. And I think that's why filmmakers who are wanting are able to risk take on that risk by self-funding or yes, yeah. by doing small crews or whatever to make it work that's why the films that they come up with are seem so much more interesting because they aren't beholden to that red tape and that hierarchy when it, it, sure, it's yeah. i mean it happens with small startups startups corp startups versus corporations Startups can pivot real fast. They can be like, well, that didn't work. Let's try something else, right? Corporations, they have to make any sort of business decision. It has to escalate up to like 10 different people, their analysts, their marketing, whatever. Then they got to do a whole financial thing. And by the time it gets back, it's completely diluted. You know, it's yeah. like why studio films, you know, are so many people complain. Ava DuVernay on one of her podcasts said, um, the a wrinkle in time was was filmed by committee. It mm. wasn't her film anymore. It was by a whole committee, you know, type thing. So, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm just I get really fired up about this stuff because, like, again, I I'm on I'm in smack in the middle. 
Um, yeah. And, it, and yeah. it's very frustrating. Yeah. Well, yeah. Because yeah. you would think that like the filmmakers and the investors are both taking in as much risk as anybody else would. So even if the investors want to invest in a, oh, we have another story with a, 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 all the A-list celebrities in one movie. Oh, my God, it's going to be crazy. But then it's another it's another Netflix film. Then yeah. you're, you're then losing that potential, I don't know, the potential viewer to actually be interested and rewatch it or recommend it. Because like the only way that anything can really get famous is word of mouth. Really? Yeah. Because if anybody is not talking about it, I don't feel like there's really not worth an investment for it, especially if there's no one talking about it. But then you do find those things that are like diamond in the rough that nobody is talking about, like a show or something. You watch and you're like, where the fuck did this come from? Like, this is amazing. Like, why didn't we know about this? It takes the other problem. But the other part of it, because you're right, because the other part of it is that it has, none of the A-list celebrities. It has no one who's a big giant name, but the show is amazing. So no one paid attention. Cult films, all of that. And amazing films. And you're like, why isn't this like being talked about today? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Because time and investors, that's another thing. They all want it to be quick, right? Like they want to be like, I put it in this year. I they go into crypto. I don't know what I to have, tell you. <laughs> I love my investors and I appreciate them so much and stuff like that. But, and I understand. Um, but I get emails like regularly. They're like, have we made our money back? Or like, why haven't oh, we made our money God. back? Mm, or like, yeah. you know, I'm disappointed because I haven't heard anything. That's how, like, I get, but I get it. Like if yeah, I had I money understand. somewhere, yeah. I want to see it immediately no, too. Exactly. You know, type thing. So I, I, I understand. And so that's the problem with films and that's is, is that like some films most films that are great take time to find their audience and take time to to reap any of that monetary yeah, yeah. benefit from you know so so many films bomb that some of our greatest films classics bombed at the yeah. you know at the theater because they didn't have the marketing or some critics watched it and hated it or whatever and now they are like a like a staple in our lives yeah but most people it, it it's a night it's a balance it's like gotta find investors that trust you as an artist that will allow you to have your creativity even though it might not be something that they'll be able to see instantly when it's released or whatever. And that's they see the long term commitment. Is, yeah, which is hard. I imagine it's, it's very difficult. You know, it's if you're putting so money difficult. into something, it's very I'm hard sure. to be like, okay, cool. Yeah. Well, I'm going to give you this, you know, I don't know, fifty thousand dollars or pounds. Yeah. And to know you've given it and it's not coming back. Obviously, it's not coming, it's, back. It's not coming back. So it's like, it's like three months, six months, a year. Two oh. years, so mm, ten so just, years. That's almost yeah, ten know. years. Um, yeah. So I don't understand, but I also like like when like you mentioned about uh, films that don't do good at the cinema, but they do good in mm. uh, what well, afterwards, like Shawshank yeah. Redemption. That was that apparently that was really bad in the cinema, um, but it became yeah. like one of those huge movies when it went on DVD or VHS. Yeah. I think. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that, that I really feel that the films that we do kind of like really underground stuff um mm-hmm. i wrote i mean not a feel but i hope <laughs> um yeah that people start to pick it up a bit you know people start to pay more attention to those investors everyone with money pays more attention to these movies so that proper authentic films can get made again because i do feel like a lot of the stuff that is churned out is just yeah because they can and it makes money and it's a job well, it's not really the art of filmmaking it's just yeah it's all but it's, what it is yeah. what it boils yeah. down to it's an ebb and flow it's a cycle so yeah. what will happen is there will be that filmmaker that takes yeah. the risk that puts it that takes the risk of themselves and self-funds it or whatever makes it and it it's the outliers and it it becomes very successful and every yes. freaking other person in the world wants to copy that yeah. right it's always like that it's 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 always um let's do it the same way because that works and stuff oh westerns don't make money and then suddenly that filmmaker 
one filmmaker takes the risk yeah. or finds the perfect combo that allows them to take that risk and then it works and everybody is fast to rush and, and try to copy then you get a whole era of that kind of film i mean like superhero films i think is kind of what we're seeing you know type yes of yeah and i feel basically. like where that came from correct me was when christopher nolan's batman came out i feel Iron like Man. that was the turning mm. point of superhero films he did something very different from all the previous superhero films which is humanized superheroes in a way yeah and from there because of the success of that every single fucking superhero film is copying that model forever so yeah. it's, it's just yeah. i mean that's what's crazy it and what's so annoying what's crazy is that that year two superhero films actually came out that were the forefront iron man yes. and, and the dark Knight. I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah not not yeah. x-men not x-men x-men oh. was in my opinion was of the ilk of spider-man back in the early 2000s okay. where yeah. it's these one-offs everybody is like do people like comic book movies i don't know it's kind of cringy it's like there's a guy in tights and he flies around yeah, it's, it's weird <laughs> but then iron man and then the dark knight mm. came around and yeah. it's like oh wait oh you can have humanizing stories with this and then yeah. it can be it amazing Nolan. it can be super engaged yeah, yeah. 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 I, I felt like yeah. black knight or dark knight or whatever the first batman that that nolan did was that because it for me was a turning point too because oh, i wanted to see i didn't sure yeah. yeah i had no clue didn't really i had did not care about superhero movies yeah. at that point at all zero saw that and i was like holy shit like yeah, yeah. I groundbreaking cared about him as a character as a person as like you know everything and it wasn't just a supernatural whatever that i didn't couldn't relate to because i don't have superpowers you know type stuff so it was like that for me was a, a huge turning point. So I just think yeah, it's just yeah. going to be, I mean, like, uh, what's what was it? Um, that horror film, I mean, Paranormal Activity or like uh, Blair Witch. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, that's what I, when I, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, when I go back to the superhero things, I'm a bit of a superhero uh, comic book geek. Um, so, that, are you? Uh, oh, good. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Me yeah, too. yeah. But, but, um, but actually, it was actually Blade. Um, Blade was the first film that was a superhero uh-huh. film. I love Blade. Um, That's yeah, awesome. That, that wasn't uh, PG. You, it's PG thirteen in the states. Yeah, so it was. That, that, that wasn't um, like a kids' film. No, that made a shitload of money, and I was like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, we can actually make some money, and there's actually a following for you know R-rated, um, yeah, superhero stuff. Um, so actually, Blade that kind of kicked things off, and then they did X Men, and it kind of went a bit downhill. Then they did, as you said, super yeah, downhill. And, I think Blade yeah. was the thing that was like basically what became like Iron Man in two thousand eight. Like it yes. was just like yeah, yeah, it yeah. was so ahead of its time, in my opinion, that yeah. it was just like not enough people are watching this, and it stinks because I was a fan of the Blade comic books by yeah. way of um, of uh, Vision and Wanda. And they uh, guess, like, yeah, and yeah. I, and I never even knew about blade until like, I read those comics. I'm like, wait a second, hold on. This day walking vampire can just like, like kill people and stuff. That is so crazy. Cool. Who, who, who is this? <laughs> and then you see yeah, yeah. all of the series and stuff and it's awesome. And then Wesley Snipes killed it uh, uh, as blade and stuff. And then nothing. It's yeah. just, it's crazy. I'm just like, wait, like these were actually like well maybe not the third blade film but the first two blade films were really, really good. yeah yeah amazing yeah. Yeah, and the second one nobody was, uh, talked about it the Toro. yeah yeah really good absolutely really good. and hellboy was the same thing it was just ah, like yeah, hellboy yeah, yeah, yeah. was in the same milk where it's just like oh it's just right. not enough people got it they just they they just weren't into it you know yeah and it's, just, it's, it's in its own its own world um and it's also yeah i love those movies really good i think those movies that when i, I saw i think i saw i saw blade 2 in the cinema and i was on the age and i managed to me too i managed to sneak in um uh <laughs> and hellboy 2 as well i saw in the cinema but yeah they were they when i watched them it was amazing really cool films to watch you know just so ahead of its time man you know and 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 then you got and then you got x-men and then you're just like oh okay we're just gonna unwind the clocks a little bit not to say that the x-men films were horrible but it's just no no but they they should have called them wolverine and the x-men it's basically wolverine and oh and then uh (laughs) fantastic four too oh that was yeah yeah that was fantastic four was just not it wasn't it wasn't very unfantastic I mean, that was really an example of 
movie by committee. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. 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 Everything's being diluted because of that. That's what I don't know. That's it's. I think the lesson movies is are weird, that, man. Yeah. They are, but I think it's it takes a lot of courage to be able to on both sides to one mm. invest in a film that has not had a proven track record of any sort in a, in a, in a director that has not had a proven track record of yeah. any sort uh, on, on a subject or whatever, but it also takes something with a director to really truly believe in something that hasn't proven track record and be able to communicate that in a convincing way that allows for people to give them the chance to, to make that film or figure out yourself how to do it, you know? Yeah. So I think that's when it comes down to it. It's like you either just need to be really damn good at convincing people about the viability of an idea without any proof yeah. <laughs> of that. Yeah. That's which is the hardest part, I think. It's like in startup, you know, and or you just got to be scrappy and gotta bootstrap it um, yeah. and make it yourself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. there's really just these two two routes, really. Yeah, you know? and one hundred ten percent. Yeah, and until you prove your worth then it supposedly gets easier but it doesn't you know i mean look at um m night Shyamalan. he 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 self had to reinvent the wheel a little bit last huh? few films yeah, yeah i read yeah. that like split all that stuff he self-funded um wow. himself yeah, have you seen I, knock at the door not or yet knock no, in the no, cabin? No. Not, not yeah no 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 yeah it's it, it's he's back, baby. I, that's all oh, I'm really? gonna say. Okay. He's he's okay. back. I I I thought it was good. I thought it was okay. I thought it was pretty solid. I didn't like the last one. It will it, it falls into the. Uh, I think it was old. I think I think he made. I yeah. I think uh, that was the last about, one. About the, the, the the grandparents now in the house. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that was a bit. Yeah, I, I didn't mind it. It was a bit creepy. Did you yeah, see I it? I didn't mind it either. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was out there. I will say that yeah, it, it was yeah. very, it was very out there. But uh, knocking the yeah, cabin, it's like a naked grandma climbing on the wall is a bit weird. But... That was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah. But that's M Night Shyamalan, though, right? It's just exactly, like exactly, especially yeah. with the happening and you know, or uh... the happening. I didn't watch. I, well, I did. I watched the first five minutes and I couldn't <laughs> pursue it's, anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. Was a bit, yeah. But that that was a um that was a good way to end it though, Christine. When yes. when when you when you said uh all that you said about you know just doing pulling yourself yeah. on the bootstraps and getting yeah. to do the thing that's intimate exactly. to you. Wear the hats, ladies Wear the and gentlemen. Hats. Wear yes. all Wear the of the hats. Yes. Because yeah, we're exactly. wearing cool hats. Am I right? Yes. That's right. So. Yeah, um, I'm wearing my scalp. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great hat, Andre. Thank hat. you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Goes with um, the rest of my body. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, Andre, for for joining us on the podcast. It's it's been a little over an hour, and I think we should probably take this in for a landing. Sure. Um, no worries. No worries. So uh, we, you want so we, yeah. we want you to come back. We we want you to come back, especially you when you make it. your uh, your next feature and and yeah. stuff like that or features. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> yes. Features. Um, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Could be back. So how can they watch? So let's do your little pluggy plugs. Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. So, cool. Cool. Yes. All right, so, so yeah. to watch Project Summer or whatever, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, go ahead. Uh, for, for Project Summer, you probably have to wait till summer um, because we're still doing the festival circuit. Um, right. But if you go, ahead, go to my website, which is whatisyoursatase.com, um, we're going to be adding like a, a membership service there and you can watch all of the films that I've done, um, mm -hmm. including Project Summer. Um, and a few documentaries and how we made certain aspects. There's access to all the video footage that I, that I own. Um, don't worry, there's no videos of me doing stuff I shouldn't be doing. It's, it's purely film, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Very good. Yes, and then ah, cool. uh, you how, have, uh, how yeah. can they follow um, your progress with the other films that you're making? Um, I would say follow me on Instagram or keep on checking the website. Um, yep. I'll put stuff on the website, but follow the Instagram. Um, again, world is yours taste .com. Mm -hmm. Um Hey, and you got everything on there. Yeah. Yeah, guys, uh, that's the best way in the end for, to, to support independent films and to get the yes. kinds of films that you want to watch. It requires the audience to to demand that kind of film. And it's always supply and demand, supply and demand. So. Yeah. Um, if you want to watch creative films that aren't diluted by the 
natural origins of studio films and and stuff like that you have to go and support you know filmmakers like andre me and whatever by watching the films yeah so exactly. yeah because that way we develop a track record that shows then i can go to an investor and be like this film generated this many views you want to invest in this other film type thing exactly yeah and you kind of build an alliance no and if your alliance yeah. is strong enough and you can knock down any wall there is uh, yeah. exactly so yeah uh, yeah for all absolutely. the filmmakers out there you have two routes you 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 do it yourself self-funded just like what andre's did, and that, that may be the first films and and then you create a track record and so that you can better convince other people to invest in you yeah yeah but, you always have the power to just do it yourself. And yes. then we can finally exactly. have better content for Netflix. Yes, exactly. <laughs> About time. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm <laughs> kidding. Yeah. No, I mean, exactly. it's, it's like, don't get me wrong. Like, yeah, I, I watch it sometimes, you know. Uh, oh, I watch it too. I think yeah. it'd be cool to see, you know, stuff which is a bit more engaging. Um, more indie stuff, yeah. you know, exactly, more, yeah. more indie yeah. films, please, you know, instead of just the regular, you know, let's love Island or whatever. Love. Yeah. <laughs> Milf you, gotta go watch it. you gotta go, go find it, go watch it, go support people's films and um, share, share, if share you see it. something that you like, you see a trailer that you enjoy, whatever, share it. Exactly. Because so that, that's, a, that's, own. it's free to do. And it really does help us out. Like just yeah. sharing it and telling people, hey, I watched this film. I really enjoyed it. You know, type exactly. you should watch it too. So please, yeah, that's it doesn't cost you anything. So doesn't cost exactly. you a thing. But what yeah. does cost you something is picking up one of these sweet get realisms book. Pick it up yes. today. Oh, wow. right this now. Yeah, this is what the because podcast Because we're the Get Realisms podcast, ladies and gentlemen. We're we're yes. still we're still slinging these books around yes. and uh get your copy today digital copy physical copy i like a good physical copy myself um new products coming out yeah new products coming out pick up a t-shirt or poster it doesn't matter uh support independent filmmaking support andre and um andre you got to come back on the on the show we we would love to have you definitely definitely and um to be here with you guys yeah no it was a pleasure i i love this i I wish we could do longer but it's you know uh we're People filmmakers. We got we got it, shit yeah. to do. Yeah, yeah. We, we, got, we got sleep to catch up. On. Yes. <laughs> and you? Oh, th- is it late over there? I bet yeah, it's, it's late. It's like eight p.m., eight thirty now, right? Yeah, ex- yeah, yeah. yeah should, so much. You probably night, miss dinner and all that. Lost my bedtime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for uh, tuning in. We'll see you yeah. next week, hopefully. And uh, that's it. Instagram, Facebook. Thank you. Um, what do you What do you want awesome. from me? That's it. Make movies. That's it for the podcast. Make, Make movies. movies. Make art. Um, and have fun doing it, ladies and gentlemen.